And thank you, thank you again for joining us. Meng is gonna kick us off. All right, um, thanks Relina and thank you all. Thanks for being here and joining us for the afternoon session. Um, for those of you who are here this morning, this will be familiar for those of you who are just arriving. Um, we've been introducing um, ourselves with visual descriptions. So I'm gonna begin by just modeling a visual description. Um, again, my name is Megan Kennedy and I'm the director of the University of Washington Resilience Lab. I use she, her pronouns. Um, I'm a, a white person with short hair and light eyes and um, describe my gender and presentation as fairly androgynous. Today, I'm wearing a tan collared shirt buttoned up to the top with a dark blue navy um, denim shirt jacket over the top with a teal blue wall behind me. Um, and I'm here with my colleague and friend, uh, Rudalina Joseph, who will have the opportunity to introduce herself in a moment um, from the Center for Communication, Difference and Equity. Um, and our two centers have come together to bring you this two-day conference. We started this morning with a 90-minute session um, in a really beautiful and rich and deep dialogue um, between community members. Um, we're here now for the next 90 minutes and again tomorrow evening at five. Uh, and all the sessions are recorded. So if you happen to miss this morning, um, you'll receive a copy of the recording and we would invite you to listen and, and tune in. It uh, was a really beautiful uh, session together. Um, so this morning we had the opportunity just to bring those of you who weren't able to be there kind of into the um, space with us. We had the opportunity to hear three sets of dialogues that were recorded earlier this year between, um, between folks on the themes of resistance and resilience. And the speakers touched on uh, these themes and connected them to ancestors, family, community, systems. Um, we learned and practiced this idea of radical listening, moving from passive listening to active listening to what we're referring to as radical listening, what Relina introduced as radical listening, I should say. And we also talked about humility and bravery and self-compassion. Um, and in this next dialogue, I mean, in, th in this next uh, 90 minutes together, we're gonna continue listening to dialogues and engaging in practices. We had two uh, practices introduced to us by um, Marie Angelis and Quan Russell, who are both colleagues at the UW, a somatic practice and a self-compassion practice. And we'll continue to learn and in integrate new practices uh, in this time together, but with more time carved out for you to listen and engage with each other. Um, I wanna start with a land acknowledgement. And um, in this land acknowledgement, uh, I invite you to actually just situate yourself in a way where you can actually maybe become a bit grounded um, before I read to you the words on the screen. So if you just wanna find yourself in a place where you can feel your feet on the floor and sit in a way where you can feel connected uh, to yourself and to the space around you, the space in front and back of you, to the sides of you, above you and below you, and maybe take a breath or two. We acknowledge with intention the Coast Salish peoples of this land the land which touches the shared waters of all tribes and bands within the Suquamish, Tulalip, and the Mokashut nations. Not only are we uh, striving this in our everyday practices in this moment today, but also in our everyday practices when we're teaching, when we're doing community work, when we're purchasing, we wanna have this land acknowledgement, not just be performative, but something that guides all of our life practices and something that we're connecting to again with some intention and some meaning. Um, and with that, I'm gonna turn it over to Relina uh, to, to share a little bit about what we're planning for today. Excellent. Um, and we spent some time this morning um, talking about our sponsors. We wanted to thank and to acknowledge them, uh, who you can see right here, as well as our wonderful teams in both the Resilience Lab, um, the CCDE, and also undergraduate academic affairs who have made everything happen for us. So we're, we're very grateful. So we are going to, um, to jump into our program for the afternoon in just a minute here. We're going to um, experience a freedom, freedom meditation from um, Jazz Moultrie. Um, we're then going to listen to a dialogue between Jazz and um, Lanisha DeBartelaman. We'll, you all will have an opportunity to talk to each other a little bit about um, and process this dialogue through something called serial testimony that I'll talk about in just a minute. And we'll be doing that in some breakout groups. 
Um, then we're going to have Tanisha Valdez lead us in a values and gratitude practice. Uh, we'll have some time for a big group discussion and also some questions and answer time. And then we're going to end uh, with Sasha um, Dutt Chowdhury leading us in a peace and kindness meditation. So that's our plan for uh, the next hour and a half. And we're going to just briefly roll through these. Uh, Megan spent, spent some time on this this morning, but to talk about uh, our norms for the space and the norms that really have guided our, um, our partnership together over this year. Um, one uh, that, that goes over all of our work together is uh, the maintenance of mindful awareness. Um, and, uh, you know, thinking about that space of um, true engagement and true um, activism and not performativity, as Megan was pointing out, is certainly a piece of this. Uh, Engaging in the act of radical listening that we, we talked about a bit in that first session, which at its heart is about listening for true understanding, um, not for argumentation. And indeed, um, that means that you, you, and you'll be doing this in the serial testimony process, are going to be um, encouraged to really speak your own truth and to open yourself up to hearing other people's truths as well. Um, uh, this is often uh, uncomfortable, and we want to be very clear and acknowledge that, uh, but we're asking everyone to feel that discomfort, to maintain mindful awareness about the discomfort, in particular if um, someone's story might activate a place of um, guilt in some folks, it might activate a place of, of resonance, um, but to please stay with it for the time, to acknowledge it and stay with it. That means that that in all of these, this work on, um, on a resistance, um, on resilience, that, that you're mindful of the space that you take up and when you need to be taking up more space and when you need to be providing space for others to engage. And in that process, how do we call each other into, um, into community? We ended our last, our last session really talking about the, the beautiful value of community and what does it mean to, to be a part of a community? Calling each other in, is it about valuing community as opposed to um, calling each other out, which is um, trying to, to eliminate someone from that space. Um, and then the, the regular norms, please um, stay muted on your computer unless you are going to be talking. And if you do have the, um, the, the literal and um, figurative bandwidth, uh, we'd love to see your faces as well. I'm going to take a moment to introduce Jazz Moultrie. Um, Jazz Moultrie is a story holder filmmaker, graduate student, a research assistant for the Center for Communication, Difference and Equity. Jazz is co-creating a literacy program on strategic refusal and welcomes food involved conversations around youth led organizing, black visibility, soulful, soulful music and healing. Jazz, it's been like such an honor to get to know you this year and care so deeply for you. And I'm so grateful you're leading this practice. Thank you, Megan. I felt your words in my heart and I'm holding on to them. And I just want to say hello to everyone else. Um, um, this is Jazz speaking for self-description. My skin is brown, my body is curvy, my dreads are flowing, and I'm wearing a Black Panther shirt that's probably my most worn shirt over the past few years. Um, and I'm also going to be leading us in a five-minute collective breathing practice. Um, I just want to say to everyone here, feel free to practice or just observe. I facilitated this practice in Dr. Regina Lee's feminist sci-fi class last month. It's also a class I missed today, and it's becoming a favorite of mine. So I just want to say shout out to y'all, and I'm really grateful to be here. Um, but before we do that, or as we want to share a quote from a by Ted Chang. Our brains relax air, and when that air flows more slowly, our thoughts slow down, making the clock seem to us to run faster. And so this quote and that story overall, I recommend it to everyone, really resonated with me in realizing that so much of our being depends on having that adequate airflow and just breathing and being with ourselves and our body. And it also rem reminded me of the times when I'm stressed 
or I'm overwhelmed and I feel strapped for time and I'm not breathing. So that happens too. Um, so the point of this exercise is for us to be with our breath, to embody our airflow as a medium for being present in this experience and to do so collectively, to situate ourselves within community with, you, with one another. And I just also wanna share that this exercise and it's named Freedom Nation, and I get it from, I learned it from, and I'm adapting it from Joseph, uh, or excuse me, Justin Michael Williams. And okay, so here we go. Again, I just wanna encourage everyone to participate, engage as you are, and observe if you feel more comfortable. All right, here we go. Close your eyes and take three slow, deep breaths. Five counts in and five counts out. Rise and fall with each breath. Make sure you don't breathe too fast. Really slow it down. Notice how your entire body expands a little with each inhale. And contract and get smaller with each exhale. After at least three breaths, answer these questions. What's your dream of a meaningful life? How are you in relation with the world around you? What will you do with your time? And I would like to end this meditation with another collective five counts in and five counts out. Really slow it down. I was just leaving space there for some silence. And I just wanna thank you all for engaging and observing. And now we're gonna to transition to listening to another clip. Thank you. I'm gonna introduce Lanisha. Um, but first, before I do, Jazz, thanks for leading that practice. And folks are welcome to share any observations or reflections you have on that practice um, in the chat as we move forward. I can say for myself that I'm going to carry your voice saying, really slow it down uh, in, my, in my mind today. Um, so I had the opportunity to introduce Jazz. I want to bring. Um, uh, Lanisha debarda Laban into the space too. Lanisha is the president um, and the CEO of the Northwest African American Museum, otherwise known as NAM in Seattle, Washington. Under her leadership, NAM is repositioning itself for accelerated growth. Lanisha has received numerous awards for her community and professional service, and she's currently pursuing her PhD uh, in the College of Education here at the University of Washington. So thank you, thank you, Jazz. And Lanisha um, is not present here today, but obviously in the space as we listen to their dialogue together. So I'm gonna start the clip here, which is about um, four minutes and 20 seconds. Because for me also within the past year, I've started doing this breathing technique, which is forcing me to slow down. I can feel it when I don't do it. And I get, but then it's like, I did it, 
in order to lower my anxiety. But then I get anxiety when I realize I didn't do it. And I'm just like trying to, and I, that never ending like catch up moment. And so like, I'm very much so hearing you and hopefully like we can talk through that piece more because I feel like that's something that'll help me. Because for me, yeah, just to decompress and to release, especially through my breath. I realize when, I, when I'm experiencing anxiety and I'm experiencing like these headaches or this stress and I usually feel like, like lately, every night I've gone to sleep, I've gone to sleep with this upper pain in the top of my back to the point where right now I'm laying on my back because it's uncomfortable to lay on my side as I normally do. Mm-hmm. So my body is telling me, Jasmine, you are tired. I had an assignment due on Monday. I haven't turned in because for me, I needed to focus on family and home and not stress myself about it. Whereas by now I would have like, or I would have pulled an all nighter, a couple all nighters to get it done. Beforehand, I'm just like, I'm letting it go. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, my body is feeling all of this. My body is feeling. So how can I get that release? And so for me, that is usually the gym. So my mindfulness is usually in some type of gym therapy. Mm. When do I have the time? <laughs> right? I went I went recently, but that was like a once per week thing, right? When do I have the time? I don't have an answer for that. So in the meantime, breathing. What else? What else? And so yeah, I need to, it's like I need to organize my life in a way at this point. It seems I don't want to say it's dire, but it's like, especially now in this discomfort, I feel in this new place and not just because of this exact place. It's just like all this newness being so far away from family. It's like, it's making me move in a certain way where it's like, I have to be organized or I know it's just going to be destruction. You know what I mean? But then through that, how do I take care of myself? And that's what I'm trying to figure out. Yes, yes, yes. Excuse me. And that's where I think this whole idea of minimalism as we were talking uh, before the recording started and essentialism can play a role oh my goodness life is so full i mean full our schedules are just overflowing with Mm -hmm. that we you know they're all legitimate we have to do these things um and organization being organized is a part of the you know solution but <clears throat> minimalism excuse me and essentialism I, I can't wait to get more into what it all means and what right. it could be for um especially for for us i think the the authors of these 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 books um are not people of color I think I don't mm. think so. And so I'm gonna have to figure out, you know, how to really tailor this to um to myself, you know, as a black woman. Um right. how I um just create um a, a schedule and a flow mm-hmm. that um again, allows me to be at my best. It all comes mm-hmm. back to that um, for not just for me, but for for the, for the communal good. Right. Um, and so um, I, I'm, ex- I'm excited. I have this sense of um, excitement about the possibilities and, and what's ahead as I grow in these practices of mindfulness, minimalism, and essentialism. So Jazz, would you like to speak to these clips? I just want to say like, Each time I hear it again, I'm just like, um, I feel like I get pulled back into that one moment, into that one conversation um, that me and Lanisha were having. And I think the only thing I just wanna add to it that um, we're not hearing through this clip is the moment that Lanisha and I shared throughout this conversation. And I think because of that moment and us taking the time and, and having our dialogue, 
she is someone who's becoming a dear friend of mine. We noticed, we, we realized through our conversations that we have the same hometown, for example. And we risk off, we like, we had these guiding questions, you know, you're supposed to, that we were supposed to address, but we just spent so many moments connecting um, on that point, and it was really beautiful. And so I want to just add that as context um, to, to what you all have heard. And as, as a, a listener, um, having the privilege of listening to that conversation, just the incredible joy that you all shared um, and figuring out all of those different points of connection and, and how that joy was really the, the, the kind of the, um, the overlay of the entire, the entire conversation um, that I really appreciated. And everyone's gonna get a chance in some small groups to connect with each other and um, practice something that we do um, uh, that's called serial testimony. And so I learned this from uh, Peggy McIntosh, who some of you all might know is um, famed from the idea of the invisible knapsack, which is something that she wrote about the ways that we delineate uh, white privilege is what she began with back in the 80s. Um, and she came to our very first group of interrupting privilege um, uh, sessions. I don't know if some of there might be one or two people who were actually there and taught us all how to do serial testimony, which is something that she does with um, her seed project for educators. And so this is directly connected to radical listening. Um, what you're going to do is you're going to receive a prompt in the next slide, which is going to be um, what did you hear? What did you notice? And everyone is going to have a minute and a half to respond to that prompt in groups of three or four. Uh, your job is to really try to hold that space entirely for yourself as a respondent. That means not um, uh, holding someone else's any, any anticipation of guilt, even any anticipation of, of agreement. That means as listeners that um, what we do with our faces, um, it matters as we're kind of hearing folks and we're able to give them um, um, perhaps some uh, uh, nonverbal affirmations as they, they are speaking. Uh, if people get stuck, I want everyone to take up that time for that minute and a half if you get stuck. Um, your partners can ask you questions, but questions that are intended to really get you to speak more and encourage you to speak in that moment. Um, if you are speakers two, three, or four, uh, your goal is also not to say, well, I really identified with what the previous speaker said, but instead to redirect your attention to the conversation that, that you just heard between Jazz and Lanisha. So uh, we're going to move here into um, the serial testimony space. When you move to your breakout rooms and we'll beam this in as well, um, please make sure that you introduce yourselves and um, uh, set up your phones as timers so you can each keep a minute and a half. Uh, any remaining time that you have at the end, you can dialogue naturally. Um, I wanna let you all know that, that Serial testimony is a monologic form of communication. So each person is speaking one in a row, speaking serious, speaking their truth or testimony, serial one in a row. Um, it's, it will feel uncomfortable, but you will have an opportunity to dialogue at the end. So Megan is setting up those groups. Uh, facilitator to facilitator, I realized I don't have access. So I just asked oh, another yeah. member of our team. To, yeah. Okay. So it might take a minute and while we're waiting, um, why don't you go ahead and take a screenshot of the instructions here so you can see. And there we go. All right, so we'll stop sharing. Everyone should be receiving invitations to join groups. So um, we would we would love to hear some folks share out 
um, what you all were, were, were are worth discussing and thinking about um, are part of our norms here in, in interrupting privilege um, uh, exercises that if you're going to respond back, if you can share out um, what you've shared, um, but unless you've gotten explicit permission for someone else in your group to share what they shared back, to not share that. So um, does anyone, I'm seeing some people, hi Sue, I'm seeing so many folks here now. I like this, uh, the gallery view here. <laughs> Sue, want to start us off? Oh, is, is that me? Uh, oh. Yes, please, you can, yeah, please, please jump in there and then um, other folks, you can raise your hand and we'll call, we'll see the order, but start us oh. off, Susan, please. Oh, okay. Um, my, I, I thought our group was really uh, cool because everyone kind of had absorbed a slightly different message. Uh, one had absorbed the message of uh, that, uh, the, uh, the engagement issue, right? How they were waiting for a delivery and were slightly disengaged uh, because they were distracted by that. And uh, another person brought up um, the, the feeling they had that these two people were uh, really interested in understanding each other. And um, I brought up the, um, the component of how I was distracted by the terms uh, essentialism and minimalism. I wasn't really sure what book they were talking about. And I went to look that up <laughs> because I wasn't sure. So it was just interesting how we were looking at these different aspects, but we all appreciated each other's uh, observations. Excellent, thank you. Thank you so much for sharing that out. Um, and I think of course this happens in every conversation, but we don't necessarily make it transparent, right? Mm -hmm. It's not um, because it might be, um, it might be embarrassing <laughs> to admit that you weren't fully engaged for this part. Or um, you might you might want to have some kind of level of social acceptance where you don't want to to admit that actually I heard something that was entirely different, right? And it feels uncomfortable for me to point that out here. So to have that moment of slowing down and that the the honesty about about responses, I think, could be really powerful. Thank you. Thank you so much for sharing that. If you want to share, feel free to raise your hand, and Lelina and I will call on you. And you can use the chat as well if that feels more comfortable. And Marsha. You know, in our group, I was uh, struck by, for me, the terms minimalism and, and uh, essentialism, it, it, those just stuck out for me personally because it was just a reminder to kind of uh, more or less stay in the moment, really kind of. Uh, take a, a beat and survey my feelings. Um, and on the other hand, some of the others in our group had a totally different uh, take on it. And that was useful too. One person talks about um, not min mineralizing oneself mm -hmm. versus being bigger, which I, ha I just think that the, the words and how they land on us is, is very interesting. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And in that moment, to even stop and be like, wait, what is it? What do you, what, let me, let me understand what you mean by these words. Yes. Right? Or this word means this to me. Let me fully understand what does it mean to you and to have that, that be on the table and transparent as well. Yeah. Yeah. Because so often we're talking across each other. Right. Um, right. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Marcia. Other other folks, if you are not muted, if you wouldn't mind muting yourself, I'm trying to see who to mute here. <laughs> Alexandra, good to see you. Hey, Megan. Um, uh, it was really cool in our group. Uh, we all had really different perspectives, but they were all kind of linked by a conflicting relationship with rest. Um, and just kind of, you know, and I, I know that we all kind of had a thought around the part where um, where Lanisha talked about how these books are not written by women of color, like, and I was just thinking, I'm somebody who's neurodivergent, uh, being stressed out and overthinking things is just a part of my brain all the time. So, like, reading books that tell me to be more organized is like, okay, like, who's writing this advice, and is it as universal as 
um, the writer would like think that they think that their advice works for everybody, but it doesn't, you know. Um, so it was really powerful to take a moment to think about how um, important rest is for resistance and that we can all benefit from slowing down. Um, but it was just a beautiful uh, conversation with the, the other people in my group. Thanks, Alexandra, for your comments. And Aggie, I see your hand. Uh, yes, the uh, the group I was in, um, we all identified with what uh, the two speakers were saying in terms of being stretched very thin and how to deal with that. It all felt very familiar to us. Um, we had a little time at the end where uh, we discussed the process and we all found uh, serial testimony is something novel and new. And for me, I'd never practiced it. And I found it kind of hard, but uh, it's an interesting way to, to listen. So. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for that, Aggie. And it, it is, it is really hard. It's not, and it doesn't feel natural. But after you practice it, um, and it's supposed to be serial, not just in terms of a row of, of folks, but that you actually practice this, you know, a number of times. Um, and so when we're doing interrupting privilege, we'll have uh, two serial testimonies per session, in, you know, that we do over the course of a number of sessions. Um, but it, but it, it, it does force you to do that, the pausing moment. And part of it is that and with so many of us do this subconsciously, when you're not rehearsing how you're going to respond to somebody and you're just holding holding their words, holding the previous words, it allows you to to tap into another just level, another registry of um, of engagement, of that mindful engagement that, that Megan was talking about. Uh, Monique? Hi, yeah, I was... Um... I was in the same group as Marsha, who also spoke, and um, I was thinking, you know, I felt like I felt like there was almost this juxtaposition with listening to, um, you know, Jazz talking about the overwhelm that she felt, and I think we could all, I certainly could relate to that, feeling so overwhelmed and trying to do everything, and I imagine trying to do everything well, you know, and the overwhelm that comes with that, and then also trying to focus on our mental health and trying to do that well. And um, so as I was moving through that conversation and listening to what they were saying, you know, I could resonate and relate and feel what Jazz was talking about. And then when Lanisha mentioned the minimal, minimalism and essentialism, those words kind of stood out to me in direct contrast to, and almost it felt like a relief to a degree. And it's an idea that I've, um, those are both ideas that I've really also resonated with. And I feel, um, I, I feel like for a lot of us, you know, it's giving ourselves permission to do less so that we can do the things that we're doing a lot better, which is um, hard to do in the society that we're, you know, in a capitalist society where productivity is where a lot of people put your put their worth, you know, rather than on just being and um, existing and existing well. <laughs> um, and so I just, I appreciated both both aspects of the conversation, very much related to jazz and also um, appreciated the ideas of minimalism and essentialism that Lanisha brought up as well. Thank you, Monique. Uh, connecting your comments and Erlina's comments and some of the others. Um, in our work in the Resilience Lab, we have the we have the opportunity to facilitate this group called Be Real, which some of you have heard about. It's a six-week program where we teach different practices. And uh, um, one of the ways that we uh, describe um, this experience of listening is how, well, we talk sometimes about how like when you're, when you're in a space, like I might be in a space like this wanting to share and I'll spend a great deal of time like rehearsing what I'm going to say. Um, and then I'll spend a great deal of time after I say the thing, rehashing what I just said uh, and, and like, like kind of going over it and in doing so I'm missing like everything that came before and everything that comes after. So overly focused on my own kind of contribution to the conversation. Um, and so we connect that to this idea of mindfulness and mindful awareness and, and being, um, bringing awareness to our thoughts 
And if I can just notice like, uh, am I rehearsing, am I rehashing, or am I just present right now as Monique is sharing what Monique is sharing? And am I listening to understand what Monique is sharing? Or am I just kind of, as Relina was saying, kind of gearing up for my thing? And that's, you know, it's all about coming back to like just the noticing and observation piece. And our breath can help us return back to that moment of like, right? So that's where the breath comes in that Jazz has been encouraging to slow it down and take that breath just to reconnect to the moment. Be like, oh wait, I wanna be listening to Monique. I don't wanna be like prepping for my piece. That's what I was thinking about. I don't know if anyone wants to respond to that or has another uh, reflection that they wanna share. And also there's some, um, really appreciate what Maurice Les is also contributing here in the chat as well. So thank you. I, I think that the, 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 the process of staying with someone's words is so much more difficult if, if you are being um, challenged or if what they're saying um, really rubs against you the wrong way. And that's when, you know, I think about um, when, uh, how, when it's really easy to listen, when it's really easy to take everything in, right? And so I'm, I'm looking at, um, at, at Aggie's beautiful face here and, and thinking about the times that, um, that her daughter is one of my best friends. And we, we sat down at the, when, when, when you all were living in Oakland and you were telling stories about, about growing up and family reunions. And I remember holding on to every piece of that. And then I can think about other types of interactions where someone has, has really um, rubbed against me or pushed my values or challenged me and how I've tried to escape, right? How I've, I have not given them my space and my attention. Um, and of course, this is so important when you know our goals are around thinking about how we're going to interrupt privilege, right? And, um, and the ways in which we all are, um, engaging you know what regardless of our identities in um in racism and sexism and homophobia and cis sexism and ableism all of the time because this is the society in which we are reared but to think about when we when we when we come up against these moments how to sit and listen and feel and not escape um because those are those are the moments that are productive and in where we can walk, walk towards some change and it takes a lot of practice. And maybe the moments that we need to say, hey, I can't sit and pause and listen right now. I need a beat. And then I want to come back uh, because like, I'm not in a place where like this is going to be productive, um, where I'm going to be a productive contributor, you know? And so it's around that noticing, like um, when that kind of automatic stress response gets engaged, is that allowing us to be present in the way that we want to be, or do we need to take a beat? So should we, if we don't have any more um, questions or comments here, I think we can move to our next exercise. So another pause, questions, comments. Okay. So um, I'm gonna take us back to the slideshow and um, Tanisha is gonna be sharing with us in just a second here. Thanks, Rulina and um... I have the pleasure of introducing Tanisha Valdez, who I've come to know over the last year or so, maybe year plus now, Tanisha. Yeah, 2020. 2020, um, two years. And um, though we still have are awaiting the opportunity to meet in person, and I can't wait. Um, so Tanisha Valdez is the HR Human Resources Manager in the astronomy, in the astronomy department here at the University of Washington. Tanisha graduated from the UW as well in 2012 with, with a bachelor's in international studies of Southeast Asia in intercultural communication. And she started working at the UW in May of 2016. Um, thank you, Tanisha, for um, engaging with us today and leading this practice. 
Thank you, Megan. Yeah, it feels really weird. I'm like, when did I take Be Real for the first time? And it feels like yesterday, but it's almost two years ago that I found the Resilience Lab uh, just by searching through UW and trying to find resources for myself for the summer of 2020. So it's exciting to be almost two years in. And today I'm going to talk about just how I feel about gratitude, one of my favorite practices from facilitating Be Real. Uh, but to start us off, for my visual description, my name is Tanisha Valdez. I use she, her pronouns. I am a half Filipino, half Black woman in my 30s. I have long Black hair, brown eyes, and terrible vision, so I always have very large glasses on. I'm wearing a blue and white shirt that zips up at the shoulder. So today I'm going to talk about gratitude. Gratitude supports my resistance and resilience by reminding me that I am enough and that where I'm at is where I'm supposed to be. Gratitude for what I have also acknowledges where I've come from and the work I've put into my path. It guides me back to thinking about the people that support me and uplift me. Gratitude can also be a form of affirmation. You often see people being assigned to write affirmations for self-care, to quote Google, an affirmation is usually a sentence of powerful words put together like a positive statement. And this sentence is aimed to tap into your conscious and unconscious mind to motivate you, to challenge you, to push you to reach your full potential in life. I love the idea of uplifting ourselves by using affirmations. Sometimes gratitude helps me support future me by looking back. I am a very visual action task oriented person. While this definitely sounds like a cliche, it's just easier for me to motivate myself when I can look back and know that I've been resilient. I was knocked down, but I got back up. I climbed that hill and I can do it again. I know that I can do it again because I'm me and I have history. So gratitude for where I'm at really just reminds me that, that I'm awesome. <laughs> um, so at the end of the day, I've proven to myself which I'm the only person that should be affirming anything that I'm here to do what I need to do and what I desire to do. Having gratitude supports my core values by bringing me back to being a positive, compassionate, independent, and courageous person. When my core values align, I am the best version of myself. I can accurately use the tools I have to challenge my progressions rather than blowing up or shutting down. Well, I don't get it right every single time, I know that I'm more equipped now to interrupt, step up and feel confident in supporting the changes that are needed to fight these battles. So please join me in participating in a gratitude meditation. This is a condensed version of the meditation. I'm gonna drop the SoundCloud that I like to listen to in the chat. So it's a little longer. Um, so I invite you to listen and practice this meditation in the future when you need support or if you're supporting somebody else. Um, so if you wanna get comfortable and feel free to turn your cameras off and I will lead us through this. All right, so we're going to do a gratitude practice now. I use this, I learned this in Be Real and I facilitated a couple of times. It's my absolute favorite meditation to lead. As we move through the practice, keep in mind that focusing on gratitude isn't intended to minimize the challenges in our lives. So I'll repeat that. Keep in mind that focusing on gratitude isn't intended to minimize the challenges in our lives. Remember that the mind has a negative bias. This practice allows us to pause and connect with what we have in this very moment, which strengthens the neutral pathways for resilience and balance. We'll start, by sit, sorry, we'll start by sitting in a position that allows you to feel awake, yet also comfortable. Allow your gaze to soften a few feet ahead of you. Take a breath at your own pace. Notice the flow of your breath. As you sit here, continue to bring awareness to your breathing, moving in and out of your body. Allow your breath to move at its own pace. As you inhale, bring a feeling of gratitude into your heart. As you exhale, let your heartfelt gratitude extend back out. Feel your breath flow in and out. And whenever the mind wanders, kindly bring it back to the sensation of your breathing. Now 
Now bring to mind someone whom you're grateful for. This might be a friend, partner, family member, mentor, or coworker. It can also be a pet. Take a moment to appreciate what this person or pet brings to your life. Perhaps they bring support, encouragement, love, sustainability, reliability. Keep this person at the center of your awareness while you breathe in and connect with the deep senses of appreciation for them. Then breathe out and extend your gratitude towards them. Breathe in and connect with a deep sense of appreciation for them. Breathe out and extend your gratitude to them. Notice any feelings or sensations that arise when you think of this person. Now focus your attention on a quality or characteristic that makes you unique. This might be your loyalty as a friend, generosity, or compassion. It might be your determination or strength in facing challenges, or maybe your sense of humor, creativity, or love for plants. Allow one characteristic to come up. How has that quality benefited you? Take a few breaths to appreciate this quality that makes you unique. As you breathe in, allow yourself to feel a sense of appreciation for yourself. As you breathe out, extend the gratitude out. As you breathe in, allow yourself to feel a sense of appreciation for yourself. As you breathe out, extend the gratitude out. Next, bring your awareness to some of the daily things in your life that you're grateful for. Perhaps this is a hot shower, a good cup of coffee, a comfortable bed, the new season of Obi-Wan Kenobi. It could be anything that makes your day a little more pleasant. So think of one thing that you're grateful for. Take a few breaths, breathing in, thanks for the small things in life, and breathing out for gratitude. Take a few breaths, breathing in, thanks for all, thanking all, for all the small things in life, and breathing out for gratitude. If I asked you to make a list of everything you're grateful for today, how many things would be on the list? Would you include your health, your hobbies? What would you list? Continue filling your breath, moving in and out of your body. Bring to mind five things that you're grateful for today. Tune in to how you're feeling right now what thoughts or sensations are present as we practice gratitude. Tune into how you're feeling right now. Before we end, take a few more breaths and allow the feelings of gratitude to fill your entire awareness. Let your breath in and expand this feeling of gratitude and each breath out, extend this feeling of gratitude. Take a deep breath in and out. Now stretch your arms, stretch your legs as needed, reach up, reach to the side, and gently shift your awareness back to the group when you're ready. Thank you. Like I said before, I dropped the SoundCloud in the chat and I really love listening to these SoundClouds. 
So if you click on that, there's a playlist you can go to and it has a variety of meditations you can listen to. Thank you so much for that. And I think that we are gonna give folks an opportunity to, um, to transition uh, back by, by talking with, um, talking with some, some friends and new friends in um, another serial testimony. Um, Megan is going to create new groups for us to move into. And um, you can just talk about in that minute and a half, what you observed yourself doing during the practice. What did you observe yourself doing during the practice? And we'll beam that into the rooms as well. Um, all right, welcome back. Welcome back, everybody. Thank you for coming back and joining us. There we go, okay. Nisha, thanks again for leading that practice earlier, centering us in gratitude. So we wanted to just uh, create some space for um, folks to respond, to share out um, anything that you want to bring to the group. This is also the opportunity to ask any questions you might have. The floor is open. Um, I will speak, and I haven't introduced myself to everyone. I am Jacqueline, um, representing Penn State University. I'm the Associate Director of Graduate Student Life and Wellbeing. Fairly new to the position, so just tapping different resources that, so we can help our graduate students um, as well. And I think one of the things we talked about um, that really resonated with me was being truthful. Um, because I honestly was multitasking during the gratitude <laughs> um, segment. And, you know, I think that's something that, you know, that the part of being honest, you know, it kind of opens up those doors in a meeting where people feel a little bit more comfortable sharing their, their truths, right? And then also making it a more humanistic aspect that we're all, you know, yes, we're working, but we're also still human beings too. And then it also just, for me, it lightens the load and makes it a little bit less tense. Um, and then I also definitely appreciated the gratitude portion um, where I was noticing those things that, you know, I do every day, like drinking coffee and taking a shower. It's kind of where I tune back into because it's something that really is, is the it's this point where I can step away and, and not actually have to multitask, but focus on those things solely. So thank you. Thank you so much for sharing that. Um, and yeah, it's, 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 a, it's, a, it's a constant challenge. I mean, I think that this work from home life is set up um, with all of these challenges for us to actually to stay present. It's, it's inc incredibly difficult. Um, so I see Annette and then Ruki. I was in a space with amazing folk who shared their vulnerabilities. I, I mean, it just, it touched my heart that they shared that, you know, in that space and then talked about why we were here in terms of the gratitude and how that brings them back, how it brings me back. Just thinking about those things that I surround my with that just surround myself with that gives me courage. And um, I don't practice what I'm gonna say. So when I gobble my words, that's me being truthful because I, I listen. I love to listen because I learn. And again, being in that special space with those folks the past few minutes, that was just really special. Thank you. Thank you so much for sharing that. Ruki? Yeah, thank you. Um, hi, everyone. My name is Ruki Hartman. Um, I work in School of Public Health, uh, Manager for Equity, Diversity, and Inclusion. I use they, them pronouns. Um, and I was in a group uh, with Linda and, um, oh gosh, Carrie, I believe. Um, uh, and we had a great conversation. Um, I think some of my takeaways uh, were that um, uh, one thing that was shared by Linda that I just thought was so beautiful was that in, in naming all the things that she was gra grateful for, it was like a pathway to abundance. Um, 
and how like that uh just like felt so nice you know and I got I connected with that because I was like yeah that's so true because usually when I'm having thinking about the things that I'm grateful for um it does lead me on this path to like something that when I'm feeling negative I don't feel like I have easy access to um so I just thought that was really beautiful so I just appreciate that that mental model there um and then I shared how in um in thinking about all the people and different things I'm grateful for it also helped um me remember uh my presence in the things that I'm grateful for so I talked about um, being in my equity team meeting um, this morning, and I lead a breathing exercise for our team every week when we meet or anytime we meet, and um, knowing that it both brings me joy to do it for my team, but also brings them joy and presence, and just kind of knowing that I'm part of that is really special, so um, it was nice to be able to share that um, with my group. Thank you, Ruki. It's good to see you too. Um, I'm thinking about how, I'm thinking about what you said just in relationship to um, like organizations. We, you know, gratitude practices can be nourishing for ourselves and individuals and gratitude practices can be nourishing collectively for our organizations, our teams, our supervisees, supervisor relationships. Uh, our organizational relationships. Um, and at the Resilience Lab, we like to have kind of team practice of centering um, gratitude as a way that we um, are in the space together. So it's not unusual for us to uh, focus on one person in a meeting and just like all go around and just express um, what we're seeing in that person and what we're caring about for that person, what we're appreciating and valuing or really going around and doing that for our whole small team. Um, and the more that we center gratitude, the more it um, strengthens those positive neural pathways within us and between us, and it allows us to be in this hard work together. And like, work is hard, life is hard, right? There's a lot of stuff happening all the time that's stressful, but when we have the pathway to abundance that we can fill that cup up with all the ways in which we value and appreciate each other and we're being explicit about that, it allows us to move through those, you know, and work on those adaptive gnarly challenges together more effectively. Um, and so I, I, there's other members of the Resilience Lab here who may be able to speak from their experience. Caleb was with our team last year, Sasha's with our team this year, Victoria may be on the line, um, but I just wanted to name that as uh, gratitude is something we can do for ourselves. There's so much good research about like daily practices for oneself and organizationally um, in, in this work. All right. Should we transition to Sasha's practice, Relina? Do you think in terms of the interest of time? All right, you want to introduce Sasha? Thanks. Here. I'm gonna, I'm gonna start sharing again. So as uh, as Megan was saying, uh, Sasha is um is a graduate student who is working this year in the Resilience Lab. Um, Sasha is also a master's student, almost done, right, Sasha? Almost done in uh, the UW School of Social Work. Uh, as an emerging social worker, Sasha is committed to working at the intersection of equity, education, and mental health. And our last practice today um, is going to be a peace and kindness meditation. Uh, thank you so much for leading us, Sasha. Thanks, Rulina. Um, my name is Sasha. I use they, them pronouns. My visual description is uh, I'm a short, genderqueer, um, brown, 30-year-old person with short, dark hair and dark rimmed glasses. I'm wearing a plaid uh, yellow and black shirt and a, a dark black shirt um, underneath that. And there's a green wall behind me. I'm sitting by a window. Um, I'm going to invite us into uh, what is called a metta practice. This is a loving kindness practice. Um, metta comes from the Pali language. Um, and so I'm going to invite you to get into a comfortable position. Um, you're welcome to turn your cameras off if you feel so inclined. 
So the goal of this practice is to increase feelings of warmth and caring by setting an intention to be better friends to ourselves and to others. This works by recognizing that we all want to be happy and no one wants to suffer. Sometimes this practice is hard for people because it feels fake or like you're forcing it. Just know that you don't have to feel any certain way. It's totally fine if you don't feel it. Research shows this practice works anyway. So we'll start by sitting or lying down if you feel so inclined in a position that allows you to feel awake yet also comfortable. You are welcome to close your eyes or soften your gaze a few feet on the ground in front of you. And we'll begin by taking a few breaths at our own pace. Start by just noticing the flow of your breath. Again, the intention of this practice is to connect with a sense of kindness and compassion towards ourselves and others. And this helps us cultivate an inner source of peace. We'll bring our awareness to the center of our chest and follow the breath's movement in and out. Throughout our practice, allow your awareness to rest here at heart center. To start, think about how each one of us wants to be happy, live in peace, and to be safe. We're connecting with this common wish, this unity among us, by thinking, just like me, other people whom I may or may not know wish to be happy, live in peace, and be safe. Now bring to mind someone whom you care for greatly. Maybe someone who supported you or encouraged you in some way. This might be a friend, family member, teacher, or coach. Tune in to how you, how you feel and think about this person. You may sense warmth, happiness, or something else. Just notice what feelings arise. Reflect on how just like you, this person wants to be happy, at peace, and safe in their life. Keep this person in your awareness and silently repeat the following. May you be happy. May you be healthy. May you be safe. May you be at peace and at ease. Keep your awareness at heart center while you breathe. Allow a sense of openness to bring you and this special person happiness, health, safety, and peace. Now imagine that person wishing you happiness, peace, and safety. Imagine them extending these very wishes back to you. Yes, you. You might silently repeat to yourself, may I be healthy. May I be safe. May I be at peace and at ease. Bring awareness to your breath and just notice how you feel. What is it like to offer yourself these same wishes of well being that you've offered others? Take a moment to appreciate those who've uh, offered you well, well being and offer yourself a note of gratitude for extending it back to yourself. 
Before you shift your awareness back to the room, take a few gentle breaths in through the nose and out through the mouth. Allow yourself to rest in this moment, and when you're ready, come back to the big group. Thank you so much, Sasha. That's the perfect way um, to bring us to a close for today. We want to make sure that we uh, give you all a, a little peek into our next session, which will be tomorrow um, at 5 p.m. Uh, Pacific time. Uh, we are going to have uh, four incredible folks uh, participating in the session. And um, I think that what you're going to find is that in these two pairs, we're going to listen to Aggie and Marsha's um, conversation, a bit of their conversation, and Jay and India's. And you're going to hear really different uh, interpretations of what resistance means and what resilience means to them. And I'm looking forward to a really wonderful conversation. So please join us tomorrow. And we thank you all so much for um, making the time to be with us today. We are all so grateful for you and um, hope to see you back tomorrow. Bye everybody. Bye everybody, thank you.